Well, I'm uh, on the road this morning, headed to the garage sale and uh, Volvo show at IPD in Portland, Oregon. Fortunately, well, didn't quite get the V70R all put back together running and driving to where I could take it to the show. Uh, so I'm driving the next best thing. I'm in my Chevy Bolt. Uh, anyways, but I have a couple minutes here while I'm uh, waiting it to for it to uh, fast charge at 50 kilowatts. Which, hmm, plot twist, not actually that fast. Um, I'm gonna go through some of the most recent comments here on the channel and answer some questions. Uh, let's dig into it. Uh, first comment, I'm surprised you all didn't hit Lord Co. while you were there. I've always had great experiences there and they help with things of that sort. Uh, so that's a comment. So these are all comments here uh, related to the uh, 67 Firebird LTG swap video. Um, Lord Co. So we were in a bit of a time crunch uh, headed down the highway and we didn't want to break anything more unnecessarily. At the time, we were thinking one of the wires burned up for the power steering pump because there was no continuity. We were thinking we had put a fusible link in the power supply wire to the relay, uh, which drives the power steering pump in the Firebird. Um, later, it turns out it was just a defective relay, but go figure. Our quick parking lot test in that hotel in Fort St. John uh, just showed that there was no voltage to the pump. So we were thinking the wire might have burned up or one of the fusible links had burned up. Um, ended up being a bad relay. So. Yeah, it wasn't rated for a continuous duty cycle as we thought, and the coil had burned up in the relay. So we were able to just order a replacement one off Amazon um, that was rated for a little bit more uh, of a continuous duty. So once we did that, uh, no issues there, but we didn't want to take everything apart and unnecessarily break things further uh, in the middle of the Alaska Highway Drive. So I just, uh, you know, built up my arm muscles a little bit and uh, drove it all the way to Washington State uh, with manual steering. So that was kind of interesting. Oh, it's funny to see some of these comments. Uh, this one here is another one is, uh, do just one or both of your families each own their very own Alaskan oil field and or diamond mine? I'm going to have nightmares now just thinking about the total of your summit racing parts, invoices, and stack of bills after watching this quick build. Not sure if I can make it through a full build that may really cost some cash. Um, so <laughs> yeah, this car was kind of expensive to put together. All in, we have about, oh, roughly about 50 grand into the car um, with all the parts invoices uh, added up. And that includes the full Heights chassis, LTG, transmission, car, interior, pretty much everything you see in the video. That being said, uh, the car is actually for sale right now. So if anybody's interested in buying it, it's on Craigslist on the Seattle Craigslist. If you just search LTG Firebird on Craigslist or click the link down below in the description, um, that'll link you to the for sale ad. If it's still up and the link is still in the video description, the car is still for sale. So if anybody watching this video is actually interested in buying the car, uh, just click contact on the Craigslist ad and that'll link your email to our inbox and uh, we can talk further. So anyways, uh, yeah, not a cheap car to put together, but considering some of the cost of the builds, uh, especially when we were running our, our restoration shop in Anchorage, Alaska, where builds would easily get four or five times as expensive as this, um, I think for building a classic pro touring car from scratch, pretty much buying a derelict car out of a field, I don't think the price is too bad. Of course, none of this price uh, includes our labor, but we were just doing it really just for the heck of it, uh, just to have some fun and uh, give ourselves a little bit of a challenge. Over the years, we've done so many LS swaps, uh, small block Chevy, big block Chevy, Coyote, you name it, V8, American Power. Uh, we wanted something different, something a little bit more economical to drive and something that just not a whole lot of people have done. So that's why we chose the LTG. Uh, YouTube user Robert Moore J uh, commented, I commissioned the microgrid controls and energy storage at the Apple campus. I could give you a list of good restaurants and fun stuff in that area. Oh, that's cool. I, that would be super interesting to see a deep delve. I see, I, I kind of, I, I nerd out on this stuff a little bit on YouTube, uh, but uh, microgrid controls and energy storage at the Apple campus. Ooh, that would be fascinating to learn more about that. Uh, okay. Uh, I could give you a list of good restaurants and fun stuff in that area. Oh, that would be fun. Um, not currently in the San Francisco or Palo Alto area anymore, uh, but next time I'm, in town, but might have to check out some of that stuff. I effing love these types of builds so much. Well, thank you for the comment. Uh, so do we. That's why uh, the video was made. Um, I was actually considering doing the swap in my 86 El Camino. You guys have convinced me that this is the route I should go. Uh, great video. Uh, 
Well, anyways, uh, that's the first part of the comments here. I'll do another one of these videos. This is kind of fun reading through the comments. Uh, right now, though, uh, my car is actually charged. So I'm going to hit the highway and uh, head down to Portland to go check out some vintage Volvos and new Volvos at the IPD Volvo open house and garage sale in Portland, Oregon. No, oh, hi there. Made it. Uh, let's go check this out. Well, uh, that was a lot of fun. I met a guy from Dayton, Ohio, um, who had a bunch of parts for a 2004 V70R and uh, randomly uh, ended up picking a full set of coilovers up. So uh, this is gonna really elevate this car to the next level. Um, Super excited for that because that was always something that worried me about the Florida wagon. Anyway, uh, with that being said, it's time to go grab a little bite to eat and hit the road back to Washington. A little bit of lunch here. Um, this place is pretty good, I guess. I like a, a rice bowl with avocado and all this other good stuff in there. But uh, we didn't finish the Q&A yet. So back to Q&A. <laughs> this is a funny one. Scott's, Scott, Scott, uh, 6794. Uh, what a fantastic car to experiment on. You boys sure know a thing or two about a thing or two. Is that car for sale? I would love to own it. Why did only one of you do the driving? Great videos of the scenery. Be safe. Make it home. Great car. Um, one of us only did the driving because I kept trying to get Matt to want to do the driving, but he didn't really feel like driving. So I did most of the driving. That's totally cool though. Um, he definitely did drive the car, just not on video for whatever reason. Uh, and then also, is the car for sale? I would love to own it. Yes, you can own it. Um, there's a link uh, down below in the description uh, for the Craigslist posting. If it's still there and it's still up, then the car is still for sale. Uh, feel free to click the email thing and Bob on the Craigslist posting to uh, have your inbox send directly to our inbox. Yes, uh, that's a good way at that. Uh, next comment. This thing with a bigger turbo, like the new Garrett G25 turbo, a proper set of injectors and a good dyno tune would be a lot of fun. I mean, not that 275 horsepower isn't enough fun for that chassis, but that engine can do better. On E85, that thing would easily make 4 to 450 wheel horsepower on a GT25. Edit. Sorry guys, I'm 41 and I've built a lot of high horsepower turbocharged imports. My last build was a 77 Civic Coupe that made 709 wheel horsepower at 34 PSI. It was ridiculous on the street, obviously, and it smoked a C8 Corvette on the highway from a roll, but it ran 955 at 155 miles per hour with slicks. I was maxing out the GTS 3582 turbo, but it did make 709 wheel horsepower out of 1.85 liters. Wow, that's insane. I can't wait to see what this Firebird can do on the autocross track with that engine and suspension. Uh, yeah, it's kind of thinking about taking to the autocross track. Um, one problem though here is uh, E85 is not really readily available. So as good as that sounds, uh, I'm going to have to forego that opportunity. I think the first order of business is getting some uh, 200 treadwear tires uh, for serious autocross performance, if the car is to be used for that. After all, what good is all that horsepower if you can't actually get it to put down because the tire has been... <laughs> Guys, this is absolutely beautiful work. Great job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, they do look like they would own a two-liter Firebird, to be fair. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> MCM chop sticker in the window. You made it heavier, that total weight by... Yeah, I was surprised too that the car got heavier, but I think that the fact that there was no seats in it when we did the initial way out may, may have uh, 
compromise some things and the heights chassis with the irs system and the four nine inch and everything definitely adds a little bit of weight uh, but yes uh chopped definitely a uh, chop sticker in the window uh, that had to go on the car felt it was pretty fitting uh i could watch you guys for hours laughing crying face emoji uh yeah that, so could i <laughs> Oh yeah, so just uh, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about today was just the uh, project cost and timeline of putting together that Firebird. Um, we did it over the course of the summer. Pretty much bought it like May 15th, and by August 1st, we had it all done. Running and driving, uh, ready to hit the Alaska Highway. Mmm. Snickerdoodle cookie. One of the biggest things was just the amount of time that it took to put that together. I was working on it pretty much uh, seven days a week, and so was Matt. Um, so you do the math there. There's a significant amount of time to do a project like that. And we were booking it. We were trying just every trick in the book just pretty much to get the uh, car put back together so we could actually drive the Alaska Highway. Uh, the goal of the build was to make it down the Alaska Highway to the Good Guys show. Uh, that was no BS. I mean, we pretty much spent the entire summer building that car. And it wasn't without its trials and tribulations because nothing really fit. The LTG was its own wacky size. So pretty much the uh, the engine is all factory. Everything else is just a completely fabric cobbled uh, masterpiece, yes. Cost-wise, got about 50 grand in parts. So was it worth it to do a build like this um, for the Firebird? Well, I don't know. I guess that depends who you ask. If you're really into the hobby, and that's really what this was, it's just an enjoyment. You know, we wanted to see what was possible with this body, which was actually in pretty good condition um, with a totally non-conventional drivetrain, something that would just turn heads and just be like, wait, what? That's under the hood? I think we accomplished that pretty good. But uh, yeah, the costs associated with a build like this, definitely not to be taken lightly. And sure, we could reuse the factory suspension, but that subframe was so mangled up on the bottom side of it, we didn't really want to mess with it. And the axle in the back need a complete rebuild, um, splitting the difference between cost of parts. We might have been to redo everything on the factory subframe. We might have saved like 10 grand using all aftermarket parts, ride tech, so on and so forth. I wish I could like put this cookie through the screen. It's so good. This is such a good cookie. There's a part of the build that. I kind of glossed over in the edit that you want a little bit more detail into, just stop, drop a comment down below. I'm curious if I uh, maybe overlook something that makes total sense in my head, but maybe there's a question about it. I don't know. Anyways, uh, for now, here's a delicious cookie. Wish I could share it with you, but uh, I'll just enjoy it here myself instead. If you haven't already watched it, take a look at the part one of the Volvo video where I fly to Florida and buy a complete, um, hodgepodge of a wagon that didn't really end the way I planned it. Anyways, uh, thanks so much for watching and uh, catch you in the next one.